Hey everybody, Matthew Doyle here for Autodesk. This week I'm going to show you guys how to use the new time editor inside of Maya LT 2017 as well as Maya 2017. Now the new time editor is really something special. It basically gives you the uh, ability to use essentially a linear non-destructive editing tool to create animations that can combine various animation clips and create compositions or stories. And you can even bake those animations out when you're done, uh, export them out as FBX files. You can do animation retargeting from other meshes uh, and lots of great stuff. So uh, rather than just ex explain it all, let's actually go ahead and, and start using the tool so you guys can see it in action. So I'm here inside of Maya LT 2017. And again, this is uh, the same for Maya 2017 as well. But uh, I'm using an asset here that I bought off of creativemarket.com. And the name of the asset is Earth Titan by Protofactor, if you'd like to check that out. So first of all, to get into the time editor, I'm going to go ahead and use the workspaces here. So top right, I'm going to use the drop down and I'm going to switch to animation, which is one of the pre-built workspaces in my LT 2017. Here's our time editor on the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of scroll up, uh, make this a little bit larger here. And there we go. Now, I already have uh, an animation on this guy here. It's just an idle animation. This came from uh, the creator. And I want to add a whole bunch of other animations using the time editor. Now, before we actually start adding some of the animations, let's just look briefly at the time editor's menu and, and how you use it. So obviously, here along the top, you have your basic menu that you find along the top of pretty much every other uh, window inside of Maya. So you've got your file menu, view, edit, so forth and so on. And you can certainly use these menus to do most of your work, but a lot of the work can be done right down here in the actual viewport of the time editor. Uh, and then, of course, below this, we have some icons here. Again, uh, most of this stuff can be done down here in the, the viewport itself. But if we see here, <clears throat> starting from the top, we have uh, mute and unmute. And I'll show you how to do that in the actual viewport here in a moment, as well as uh, creating clip from selection, create pose clip from selection, uh, grouping, ungrouping clips, uh, trim mode, scale mode, looping mode. Uh, feel free to go through these if you like, but a lot of these are again available down here in the viewport itself. Alright, so next up that's kind of important is this composition drop-down. And the composition drop-down allows you to create multiple compositions or stories that can have different layouts, uh, different, um, different setups, but using the same animation data. So if you create a second composition, obviously you're going to be able to have uh, use the same, share the same data from the first clip, but lay it out in a different way to create a different story. Just go ahead and rename our first composition here, and we'll just you know we'll just leave it composition one. Uh, and I guess if we wanted to, we could go ahead and create a new composition here called composition two. And we can see here now that we have composition one and composition two. All right. So let's go back to composition one. And there are a couple of ways that we can actually import our animation data. We can import from an external file. We can add content from our current scene. And we can even drag and drop files. So let's look at uh, just adding from the current scene. Importing content from an external file is, is pretty standard. Obviously, you're going to click the button, and it's going to bring up the browser, and you just browse to an FBX file or whatever. But let's go ahead and add content from the scene. And to do that, we'll go ahead and select the skeleton here on my character and we'll select his hierarchy and we do have an idle animation on him so far so we'll go ahead and just hit this plus button here and that adds the first animation our idle animation to our editor now you can see here what I'm doing is I'm scrubbing the playhead here just by dragging this yellow indicator that tells us what frame number we're on alright and you can just click anywhere on the timeline and that scrubbing in playhead will jump right to where you click and if you click and hold after it jumps you can drag so pretty pretty cool there now if you want to change the timelines width the size of it you can easily do so by dragging these start and end sliders here these black sliders so we can see now I've got this matched up over here I'm gonna go ahead and drag the actual animation clip just by clicking and dragging to frame 0 as a start and readjust my start and end points here. Now, if I hit uh, holding this, you know, selecting this animation click, if I hit if 
I hit F on the keyboard, that will frame the animation clip. And of course, A would frame all the animation clips, just like uh, framing in Maya's viewport, F and A selects, uh, frames the selected or frames everything. All right, so also scroll on the mouse wheel will change your size of the viewport here, or the timeline, I should say, in the time editor. All right, so let's just uh, Alt and middle click to pan to or drag our timeline over to the left a little bit here. And let's look at another way to go ahead and add an animation clip into the time editor. You can actually drag animation clips from uh, straight, straight from your desktop into the time editor as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I have a folder full of FBX animation files and I'm just gonna drag them uh, onto my viewport. So let's find a good one here. Let's go with, um, well, we need a walk cycle. So let's go ahead and drag a walk cycle. You can see here I'm dragging over the FBX file, release the mouse button and it should import the data for me. All right, and you notice it actually imported basically where I dropped it, where, I, where my mouse cursor was at when I released the button. I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it over here and there we go, we have our walk cycle. Let's go ahead and frame it up a little better. All right. Now, over here on the left, you can see that we have the names of the tracks. So we have track one and track two. We can simply double click the name and change that. So we'll put the uh, name here, Idle. And we'll double click this one and we'll name it Walk. Now over here to the left are some interesting options here. So uh, first of all, we can show keys for uh, all the clips on a track. So by clicking that button, we're actually seeing all of the keyframes for this particular animation. All right, and if we click uh, the button here, this is basically going to mute that track. This is the mute button, just like the button here. So now we, we won't see any animation from that particular track. So we'll go ahead and unmute that. And if we want to solo that track, we click the next button here. And the solo button basically turns off all other tracks, leaving this one playing. All right. Um, all right, so we're gonna jump over here. Now, also we have this wait section here where we can actually put a value in, a waiting value. So I just put in 0.5, and that basically determines uh, in if you have overlapping animations here, which one has the most weight. So you can see I've overlapped the walk and the idle clip here. And so now not only am I idling, but I'm walking. But the idle animation has a weight of 0.5 and the walk animation has a weight of one, meaning that its animations, its trans rotations and transforms and whatnot on the bones or the joints are going to be uh, uh, more prominent than those of the idle animation. All right, so let's drag this back over here and change our weights back to one. All right, so you'll notice next to the name of the clips, there's a little arrow, and if we click that, we can actually open it up to see the keyframes for all of the joints inside of this particular clip. And over here on the left, under the track name, we can see I have another arrow here, and I can just continue basically to recursively open this up to see all of the various uh, joints and their translations and rotation keyframes and, and everything. So uh, if you want to be able to modify these, you certainly can. But I'm going to go ahead and close this out for now. Uh, that's a little advanced topic. This is just a kind of a beginner's walkthrough of the time editor. All right, so let's assume that we want two clips to uh, basically overlap and have kind of a blend between those two clips. In fact, let's just go ahead and blend my idle and my walk here. And this is easily accomplished. If we go ahead and move this walk animation back up to the, the uh, idle track, we can then drag it over the idle clip, and this will create a blended transition for us. So now if we go ahead and scrub that, we can see our idle is transitioning into a walk. All right, now let's go ahead and just drag this back down to its own track. All right, so that covers crossfades. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how to group various uh, animation clips together, and that's done pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new animation track, just right-clicking here, create three animation clips, and we'll go ahead and import some more animations. So let's see here, I've got uh, a death animation. We'll go ahead and drop that in uh, right here. And I've also got some attack animations. I've got uh, left foot stomp, we'll drop that in. And a left hand attack, we'll drop that in. 
and we'll just line all three of these up and we'll go ahead and bring the uh, attacks out to the end here there we go all right so let's say we want to group these uh, attack animations so we'll just go ahead and rename these tracks first of all so we've got our left foot stomp and we've got our left hand attack and this here will be death so to group these two we'll just go ahead and select them right click and choose group all right and there we go now if we move this group we can see we move all the clips with it and if we don't want to group anymore we simply choose ungroup let's take a quick look at some of the editing tools up here so we obviously have this tool here split at current time that means if I simply put my cursor here on this particular clip and click this button, it splits it into two different animation clips and then I can obviously pull them apart. Now I can also trim the start time here. So if I just move my cursor here, click this button, that will trim the start and I can trim the end, moving my cursor to the end here and we'll trim right there. All right, so let's take a quick look at the toggle ripple button here. Now what toggle ripple is for is normally when you cut a clip, uh, cut a piece off of the end of it all the clips after it will stay in the same position so let's just look at how that works I've got this clip selected here death standing and after it I have the foot stomp attack and if I go ahead and trim the end of that clip you can see here it leaves a gap between the end of it and the foot stomp so let's just go ahead and undo and now we're gonna toggle ripple and do the same thing cut the end and we can see by cutting it with the toggle ripple enabled it brings the animation clips that are after it all the way to the end of the, the or the new end point of our death standing animation. All right, so the tool by default, the time editor tool should be set to trim mode. And the trim mode basically allows you to interactively set the start and end point of any animation clip. So take for instance our left hand attack here. I can change the clip's starting point simply by dragging this left the left side of the clip either to the left or to the right. So we can see here, I'm setting the starting point of the clip here, which basically crops the animation. And I can set the ending point the same way. All right, so you can adjust the size of the clip this way as well. You can either use the trim tool this way or you can use the tools here to set the end and or the start and end values, all right? So let's go ahead and set it back to the way it was. And let's look at the scale tool now. So the scale mode of the tool will allow us to actually change the speed of the animation. While the trim tool does not change the speed of the animation, it simply cuts off the front and end of the clip. The scale tool will allow us to make the clip either slower or faster. So using the scale tool, if I were to drag the end of the clip to the left, we're essentially increasing the speed. So in this case, I've increased the speed up to about 33%. So now we have a much faster animation. I can also decrease the speed by dragging it to the right. So we'll decrease the speed by about 300% here. So now we have a much slower version of the animation. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to normal. Now we also have the loop tool. Now the loop tool allows us to loop any animation with ease. So if we go ahead and select the loop tool, all you have to do with the loop tool selected is drag the animation to the right from the, uh, the end frame there. And this will loop the animation however many times you want it to loop. So in this case, let's say I want it to loop uh, two times past the uh, first clip. So now we can see the first clip plays and then the second clip uh, it plays again and then loops a third time. Finally, we can use hold mode and hold mode will allow us to extend the very last frame of our animation. So if we drag here, we're actually holding that last frame. All right, so let's look at the relocate tool. So let's say you have two animations and in this case, I have a walk with root motion. So it's moving uh, the and the character is actually moving as it walks. It's not ro animating at the origin. And then I have my death animation, which happens at the origin. So let's say that in my movie clip here that I'm creating, my story, I want him to walk forward and then die. 
Obviously, I don't want him to snap back to the origin when he dies, so what I need to do is relocate the death animation so it kind of so it matches up to the walk animation as best as I can. And this is where the relocate tool will come in really handy. So if we select that death animation and then select the walk animation, and if we right-click and choose relocate, we'll go ahead and create a relocator. All right, and so now we'll move to the death animation. And we'll go ahead and move the relocator forward on that animation. And we'll just keep doing it until we match it up with the end of our walk animation. So now if we go ahead and scrub the timeline, we can see that he walks forward and he dies in the same spot. The relocator tool is really handy for doing this type of thing. Now, you'll also notice, however, that after he walks forward, he just snaps into a kind of an idle pose, then he dies. We need to have a transition. So to create that transition, we'll just go ahead and drag our death animation forward a few frames. And then, if we select the walk animation and then right click here and choose Create Transition, Maya LT or Maya will automatically create a blend transition between the two animations for us. So we can see he walks forward and begins to blend into the death animation. Nice. I think we're just about finished here. There's one more thing I'd like to show you, and that is that you can easily add audio animations to the time editor in case you want to use them for timing purposes for your animations. And uh, all you have to do to do that, so let's let's just see here we have this stomp animation where he's stomping down real hard. And let's say we want to add a, a stomping sound here. All we got to do is go ahead and right click and choose create audio track. And I'm going to move this audio track up so it's in the same vicinity as our stomp animation. So we'll go ahead and right click and choose move selected tracks up. And we'll just keep doing that until it's right below our stomp animation there. Now we can right click on the timeline and choose import audio clip. And I've got an audio clip here that I can use. And we'll just click it and now, there we go. We have our stomp audio as he hits the ground. Perfect. All right, guys, so this has been a basic walkthrough of the time editor. There's still some features I haven't covered that are a little more advanced, and I'll probably cover them in a future blog post, but we have things such as being able to bake the animation clips and export them out. We also have uh, retiming uh, as well as retargeting animations uh, and uh, also working with layered animations, actually being able to adjust uh, the keyframes of layered animations inside of the time editor is really, really handy. But those are kind of advanced topics that I'll cover in, an, in a future blog post. But I think with this information, you should have enough to get you started using the time editor uh, fairly competently. And I didn't really go over the compositions that much here. Obviously, we have our second composition, and we could begin, uh, you know, adding, uh, adding the clips and whatnot here, and make a different layout and have a different story that happens. Now, uh, also available is the ability to go straight to the graph editor from within the time editor, and of course, from the graph editor, you can jump right back to the time editor. So that's really handy as well. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial on the time editor in Maya LT. I think you'll find that the time editor is going to give you a whole lot of power to do a lot of great animation stuff uh, in uh, a very short amount of time. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.